Hi everyone, my name is Chi Zheng Zhang. I'm going to present our newest system about remote computable caching using spot VMs called Compute Cache. This is joint work with Phil, Daniel, Bajish, Vincent, and Boom. So database workloads can always benefit from more memory. However, memory is not free. More memory means higher cost. Even if applications are willing to pay for more memory, physical servers do not have unlimited memory and the workload can change periodically or permanently. So getting more memory from local machine is not always possible. Ironically, there are massive amounts of unused memory in cloud data centers, which is caused by both external and internal fragmentation. In particular, there is 60% of memory in Asia data centers not being utilized. Together with unutilized CPUs, they are offered in spot VMs. Spot VMs are cheaper than regular VMs and the data center networks are getting increasingly faster to connect to them. However, since spot VMs are opportunistic resources, they are distributed in different places. They are also unreliable because they can be reclaimed by the cloud VM allocator at any time. Due to their characteristics, existing caching systems cannot utilize spot VMs efficiently. I'm going to use a graph traversal query as an example. Let's say we have a social network graph, which is cached in memory on two servers, server one and server two. There's a vertex V1, which has two neighbors, V2 and V3. V1 is on server one, V2 and V3 are on server two. The application issues a query that traverses V1. If the caching system supports only IO interface, which means that it can only do single record read and write, then it requires three round trips to execute this query. The first round trip is to get the record of V1 from server one to the client to get the pointers to V2 and V3. And then it uses another two round trips to get V2 and V3 respectively. Systems that support key value interface and computer offloading like Redis and Memcached require two round trips, one for dereferencing and one for pointer chasing. The first round trip is necessary because these systems require specifying all keys that are accessed in the offloaded function which means that they cannot do server-side dereferencing. As a result, if we run these systems in spot VMs, network communications are going to be the major performance bottleneck. Our system Compute Cache solves the problem by supporting the ideal interface for remote, map, uh, remote caching using spot VMs. Specifically, it supports computer offloading with server-side dereferencing and pointer chasing, which effectively reduces network round trips. In the previous example, it achieves minimal round trips to execute the query. Compute Cache also handles the churn of spot VMs automatically so that users don't need to worry about it. Given the generality of its API, Compute Cache can benefit a wide range of data intensive systems like key value stores, graph databases, and relational databases. All right, I just presented the motivation of Compute Cache. Now I'm going to talk about how we design it. Essentially, Compute Cache is a remote caching system that supports computer offloading with stored procedures, abbreviated as SPROCs. Let's look at its components. The application is hosted in a regular VM, which runs a client library to manage the cache. To create a cache, the client talks to the cloud VM allocator which allocates a set of spot VMs to host the cache. The application VM and the server VMs are connected by a fast data center network. The cache allocated by the application is divided into fixed length cache regions, which are assigned to the server VMs. The user can define the behavior of the cache by specifying sprocks, which are later invoked in query execution. Let's look at how we design the interface. The first challenge is to specify the computation when we allocate a cache. This is important because the CPU frequency and call count will affect the performance of executing sprocks. Our solution is that we let the user specify the performance target. And at a runtime, we collect the statistics of executing sprocks and we dynamically adjust the CPU resource. 
The second challenge is to support server-side pointer chasing. This is a problem because applications only know cache addresses, which are virtual, but chasing pointers requires physical locations. Our solution is to provide a new data structure called a local translator for Sprocket implementation. It provides a translator function that takes as input the cache address of a record and returns its physical address on the local machine. A third challenge is to handle out of bounds exceptions. As Compute Cache uses multiple spot VMs to host a cache, or execute a sprock on one server, it may require data on another server. This is called out of bounds exception. And we provide several options to handle it. The first option is to ship the data with dflow, which basically fetches record from another server to the local server that's executing the sprock. The second option is to ship the function with fflow, which moves the sprock execution to another server. The final option is to stop the execution and return to the client, which will figure out how to handle the exception. All right, now let's look at how we execute queries. To achieve high throughput, we must deliver requests and responses between the client and the servers very quickly. However, the traditional networking stack cannot meet our requirement because of the kernel overhead. Our solution is to use ERPC, which is a user space RPC library that can utilize DBDK and RDMA. In addition, the Sprock requests in Compute Cache are small, each of which consists of a Sprock ID and its parameters. But the Sprock responses may vary in size. For example, aggregation and scan results are very different. Our solution is to adaptively fetch these messages based on their sizes so that we can fully utilize the network bandwidth. The second challenge is to schedule sprocks. As Compute Cache supports massively parallel sprocks, many sprock requests may arrive at the same server at the same time. And different sprocks have different execution times. Some sprocks may even encounter out of bounds exceptions in the execution. So to, to efficiently execute diverse sprocks, our solution is to employ work queues plus a server-wide scheduler. The work queues make sure that every call is utilized efficiently. And the scheduler makes sure that the load is balanced between calls. The final challenge is to construct the local translator and route and execute dflow and fflow requests. Our solution is that we first build a mapping from cache regions to server VMs on the client side. And then we send this mapping to every server for constructing their local translators and routing dflow and fflow requests correctly. Every dflow is implemented as a special read request and fflow as a special sprock request. An important design in Compute Cache is fault tolerance. It handles the churn of spot VM recriminations and failures. Specifically, at runtime, a server VM may be reclaimed by the cloud VM allocator. When this happens, we allocate another spot VM or a set of VMs, and we need to move the data from the old server to the new server. Meanwhile, other servers may send a dflow request or fflow request to the old server. We handle the churn by migrating cache regions updating and synchronizing the mapping, and routing dflow and fflow requests properly. Please refer to our paper for more details. Okay, I'm going to present some evaluation results. We set up our testbed in Asia HPC cluster, which has an infinite band network. And the VMs have a lot of CPUs and memory. We compare with Redis, which is a popular remote caching system. It supports compute offloading with the eval function. And we put it in the same network as Compute Cache. OK, this is the result of executing sprocks in Compute Cache and Redis. With one thread, Compute Cache can achieve 12 million operations per second at executing sprocks, while Redis can only achieve 0.1 million operations per second. When we use 16 threads, Compute Cache can achieve more than 10x speed up while Redis achieves only 2x. So Compute Cache is two orders of magnitude faster than Redis due to the efficient use of high-speed network. 
It also scales much better because of better parallelism. Our paper includes more evaluation results. All right, now I'm going to discuss several future directions. We first want to support a concurrent sprouts that can update the cache, which will require synchronization and isolation between sprouts. The second direction is workload-driven data partitioning for multi-record sprouts. This is basically to minimize the data movement when we uh, execute sprouts. We're also interested in boosting compute cache performance with various data center accelerators. To summarize this talk, our system compute cache offers an easy and high performance way of utilizing data center resources. It provides a new API to support a server side pointer chasing and a scale out Sprock execution as the cache is partitioned. Our system achieves orders of magnitude high performance than Redis. Currently, we're actually working on this project and exploring more opportunities in this direction. All right, this is the end of my presentation. Thank you.